Satanic oppression is real everywhere, in every nation of the earth. But more real is the victory won on the cross through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this you have access to the abundant life that brings deliverance from all satanic oppression, dominion, prosperity, and breakthrough. This is your moment of breakthrough, brought to you by Pastor Isaac and Dominion Life Christian Center, Oakland, California. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? You may be seated. I want to thank God for all those testimonies. Those ones can only be what God has done. We thank God for divine visitations on all of them. It gets all the glory. I'm going to be teaching as I continue this morning. The title of this message is The Ninefold Gift of the Holy Spirit, which I have started under a different title. The Ninefold Gift of the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to be getting into the gifts of offerings as I have apportioned them into subcategories. We will go as far as the Holy Spirit will help us this morning. The gift of the Holy Spirit is, the Bible says, for the profit of all. So there is no profiting in Christianity without the gift of the Holy Spirit. So when you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like I said, you are praying for the baptism of power that will bring your profiting. It is the anointing, which is God's power, that brings deliverance, that breaks yoke. One of those testimonies, we thank God for who, the, 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 one of our, the testimony of our brothers. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit went to work and brought a deliverance in the realm of the Spirit, and everyone on earth complied. When heaven rules, everyone involved on earth have no choice, they have to comply. So, a baptism of the Holy Spirit is a baptism of power. So, as a Christian, you never stop before because you started speaking in tongues. Now, that is the initial sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Then you press on to the realm of power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When there is power, there must be testimonies. When there is power, because every unwanted, every situation or desire submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible says the anointing, which is God's power, breaks the yoke. Yokes must be broken when there is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given, the Bible says, for our profiting. They are given for our dominion. They are given to live the life that the enemy cannot touch you. Satan is the enemy of humanity. And he likes no one. And he's everywhere troubling everyone. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized into power, then he cannot do whatever he wants with you because there is a power behind you that is more than him. So the gift of God is what I say for the profit of all. In First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 and 5, I trust the Holy Spirit will help me this morning and put some things into perspective because an understanding of the application and the workings and the protocol of the gift of the Holy Spirit will bring efficiency in all that we do. First Corinthians 14 and from verse 1: pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. So it's a good thing to ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit. But especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So the first thing we need to note over there, it is scriptural. It is required to speak in tongues. Let me say, when you speak in tongues, you are not speaking to men. You are speaking unto God. It's a mystery of the Spirit. That is why you 
care less about what the person next to you is saying in the spirit it's not talking to you but at the same time we're going to look into some administration administrative issues as regards to speaking in tongues as we go but he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men so when you prophesy you prophesy to men that edifies that exalt so prophecy must come in understanding are you following me so prophecy is the ability to speak words given by the holy spirit in a language understood by the speaker and the hearers is somebody following me prophecy is the ability to pick what the holy spirit is saying in your own understanding you know what he's saying and your hearers are also understanding you so you don't prophesy in the spirit so when well, the holy spirit came on me i started prophesying in the spirit no you prophesy in understanding you understand what you are saying your hearers the bible says here he who speaks in tongue edifies himself yes you build yourself but he who prophesies edifies the church verse 5 paul now say i wish all spoke with songs but even more than you prophesy for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues because there are hierarchies unless indeed he interpret that the church may receive edification so speaking in tongues with no interpretation benefits not your hearers when you speak in tongues you must know so you don't be aggressive towards someone when you are speaking in tongues it's between you and god the question is that why must i hear your tongue except when we are praying we're going to go to a lot of administrative issues when it relates to dealing with the gift of the holy spirit this morning so no one by an act of his will can operate truthfully in any of these gifts without being moved by god you cannot just determine to begin to move on any of this the first six gifts that I'm going to highlight without the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit is the chief mover, chief speaker behind the gift of the Spirit. Otherwise, you are on your own. The gift of faith, which is one of the gifts, other the gift of power, the gift of healing, the gift of working of miracles, the gift of designing of spirit, the gift of the word of wisdom, and the word of knowledge. All those six gifts, there are nine gifts, but all these six gifts, you must be enslaved to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Is somebody hearing me? The Holy Spirit is the one that can move with power. It's the Holy Spirit that can move with revelations. That is the sub headings for those two groups. So you are at the mercy of the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, no one can perform any miracle unless you are a magician so you are entirely at the prompting of the holy spirit but in the case of the gift of prophecy the the gift of different kinds of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues you have a saying but you still must yield yourself to the holy spirit because the initiative because begins from the holy spirit but you have some control over their applications is somebody hearing me when it comes to the gift of prophecy the gift of different kinds of tongues and the gift of interpretation of, of tongues this three group under the gift of revelations by the prompting of the holy spirit but you have a saying in the control in the application of it otherwise you can become a spiritual nuisance so a vessel need to yield himself or herself to the holy spirit 
the initiative must begin from the Holy Spirit, but you have a level of control when it comes to the applications. Now, at the new church, Paul was writing to this church because once they were introduced to the speaking of the Holy Spirit, being baptized with the Holy Spirit, now it was a new thing. So, and I've shared this before, once they show up in church, the moment they enter, they started speaking in tongues. So it's like four or five people are lining up. The moment they enter the church, the guy is speaking in tongues. Cha -cha 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 -cha. All over everywhere. Because they took it for a show of spirituality. So it's against this backdrop. Paul was writing this, Paul wrote this letter. So it was like, okay, I don't know where you have been all week, but for you to still know that I see a fire, then I begin to speak in tongues everywhere. So to even say, oh, Sister Michael, how was your week? Cha 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 cha. Everybody, Sister Michael also will cha 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 back. So it led to a lot of confusion. Is somebody following me? So Paul had to write. Hear me, church. Paul knew the heart of God. Paul encountered God. You know, I was wondering, I don't know if you have, all the other disciples, the original disciples with Jesus Christ, none of them match Paul in their writings, in the revelations. Paul was the only one that would tell with audacity that the Holy Spirit revealed this to me. This is how this has to be done. Then I've been wondering, why was Paul not part of the original disciple? You know what the Holy Spirit said to me that I believe? Paul would not have kept quiet when Peter ran away. That mob that day would have killed Paul. They would have made Paul to the cross with Jesus. So, because God still needed him for ministry, <laughs> Paul would not have denied him like Peter did. Because I was wondering, this man had so much revelation, this much boldness. Paul, talk about Paul, he was the one that saw everything. He was the one that never denied him. He was the one that they stoned. When they thought he was dead, they left. It was rose up, he left. He was the one beaten by a python, a snake, with the poison, and the, the snake shook it off. And it took off. He was the one that they fly, and he didn't die. So I was wondering, how come this man was not with the original disciples? And I came to an understanding, he would not have denied Jesus. He would have been struggling with them with the cross. And they would have nailed him to the cross as well. God will have missed him. So that's who Paul is. So you will not move forward in spirituality without a study of who Paul is. So Paul had to write, and he had the audacity to do, had to write to address this issue. Then he says something. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 18, he says, I thank my God I speak with songs more than you all. Yet in the church, I will rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in songs. So because speaking in tongues does not benefit anyone but you. It's between you and God. That is the one you speak in tongues. You speak mystery unto God. I'm going to address a lot of issues because there are times when we have to pray corporately in the spirit that is exempted. There are times when you lead prayer. You lead also in understanding and in the spirit. That is understandable. But every other application of tongues that you are on your own, that is not part of the order of the service, something is wrong with your administration of the gift. Are you following me? Paul says, I thank my God. I speak with sons more than you all. Even though you don't hear it in me in the church. Except for assignment. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 also, verse 32, and verse 32 and 33 says, And the spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophet. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. 
God is not the author of confusion. So you have control over it. There is nothing like I'm speaking in tongues, I can't stop. There is nothing like the Holy Spirit move me and I become unruly in the course of any service. God is not the author of confusion. The spirit of the prophet as subject to the prophet. I can't go to a place I'm privileged to have a couple of spiritual sons around. If I go to their place to minister, I will ask them, how long should I go for? There are situations where they will tell me, as long as you want to go. And after that, I said, that is dangerous. Because you get better towards the hand. And if you not say as slow as you can go, when you think I will be ending, I could be starting. The spirit of the prophet is subject. Every house of God as an angel that is the prophet of the house. The spirit of the as just as you cannot come to my house and rearrange my furniture. You cannot go to a house of God and rearrange the spiritual furniture that is in there. In the name of being moved by the Holy Spirit. So, and this has been the reason why many people only experience songs. But when it comes to power, there is no power. Is somebody hearing me? The Bible says, and the spirit of the prophet as subject to the prophet. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the, of the saints. So the believer retained the power to either exercise this gift publicly or not exercise them. Is somebody following me? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 22, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 14, 22 and 23, it says, Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. So to our unbeliever, tongues is a miracle. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for, the, for he who believe. Because prophecy to an unbeliever, you are just talking. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place, and all speak with songs, there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers. Will they not say that you are out of your mind? Because everyone is allowed to come to the church. You see, Paul said, Will they not say something is wrong with all of you? With the exemption of corporate prayers, you are have control over speaking in tongues. Is somebody hearing me? If you are, say, I hear you. I hear you. One more time. So, going to the gift, this group I'm teaching this morning, I call it the vocal gift because they rely on the use of your vocal cords. In other words, you have to speak. That is the gift of prophecy, the gift of different kinds of tongues and the gift of interpretations of tongues let me start by the gift of different kinds of tongues because there have been a lot of misunderstanding about speaking in tongues as a matter of fact there are people there are churches there are folks that don't believe in speaking in tongues that's why we're going to be looking into the scriptures hear me when you are filled with the holy spirit the initial sign Confirmation that you have been touched by the Holy Spirit is you will speak in tongues, just as what we have in the book of Acts, chapter 2. But let's look at the gift of different kinds of tongues. This gift is the ability given by the Holy Spirit to speak in a language not understood by the speaker. The gift of different kinds of tongues is the ability given by the Holy Spirit to speak in a language not understood by the speaker. 1 Corinthians 14 and 2 says, For he who speak in tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. 
However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now let's talk about let's look at subtopic tongues in the in, in any public assembly. The use and application of tongues in any public assembly like in a church. First Corinthians 14 and 4. The Bible says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So if we are not praying corporately, you are speaking in front, is okay, but why must I hear it? Because you speak to God, you edify yourself, it is not my business. And there are many ways to go about it. If we are not interceding in the spirit, which is powerful, we're going to get there, which is good to pray in the spirit. The best prayer you pray is the one you pray in the spirit. But if that is not what we're doing, you are not the one ministering, your tongues will be disturbing your neighbor. You can look at that. Then the other thing is that you don't have any business. When I was in Georgia some years back, I was teaching a class like this. And one woman raised up her hand because I like question and answer. She said, Pastor, how do we know that the one speaking in tongues is speaking the true tongues? Then I said, what is your business, whether it is true or not? I said, you, he said but we need to know. I said, but you just must be sure the Holy Spirit is the one speaking through your own lips. Because somebody speaking in tongues has everything to do with that individual and God. It is not your business, but you, everyone, has control. There is nothing like I'm speaking in tongues, I can't stop. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. I am saying this so that you can grow. You know, we started this by power for dominion. You will never enter the realm of power as it relates with the Holy Spirit if you violate any of these rules. Because the moment you break this rule, flesh has taken over. You can be speaking in tongues as in your lips. It has no connection with the Holy Spirit. It has nothing to do with your soul. Not to talk about your spirit. But your tongues are saying something. Yes, they don't understand. But it may not necessarily from the Holy Spirit. So if you are going to grow in the realms of power, you need to understand the administrations so that you don't run in violations. Because the moment you violate, the Holy Spirit step out. It's no longer him. If you like, you say you lose control, speak in tongues from till tomorrow. Nobody is going to arrest you. Is somebody hearing me? He who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. First Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. <laughs> he says, These things, first Timothy 3, he said, These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God which is the church of the living god the pillar and the ground of truth how you pray in your room is different from how you pray when you are in the church you can lose control in your room nobody cares so paul wrote to timothy he said he said if i am delayed so that you may know how you want to conduct yourself in the house of god which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. And Paul said earlier on, he said, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. But there is a way to administer tongues. That's why you don't hear me speaking tongues often. Are you following me? I am saying this, remember, because you must advance to the realm of power. Many people have disconnected tongues from the baptism of the holy power from the baptism of the holy spirit and just remain at the level of speaking in tongues you can speak in tongues and become so fluent like english language it may still lack power so the most important thing in the school of the holy spirit is entering the realm of the anointing the power of the holy ghost the anointing of God over your life 
once you are sidestepping the Holy Spirit in the administrations, it backs out. Remember, the Holy Spirit does not come in you to do what you want to do. The Holy Spirit comes on you to take over the control of your life. Once you struggle the control with him, it's not there. If somebody is enemy, so anything that has to do with the Holy Spirit, there's nothing like this is what I want to do. This is how I set it. Is it that him or you? You want to do your will? He lets you do your will. Praise the Lord. So what are the use for songs then if we are talking about all these administrations? Number one, you can pray. You can praise God in the spirit. If during the praise and worship, worship Holy Spirit took over, you can praise in the spirit. But if the worship leader says quiet, because the worship leader is the minister of the hour, everybody stay quiet. You have control over the use of your tongues. Are you hearing me, church? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 from verse 14, 14 and 15, it says, For if I pray in a song, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. So you can sing, worship God in the spirit. And in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 19, the Bible says, speaking to one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs. That spiritual songs mean you are singing songs that are spiritual, especially worshiping God in the spirit. Of course, they don't expect you to play Michael Jackson when you say you are worshiping God. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Are you hearing me? I need to let you know uh, our locations and our times of service. In Oakland, we meet every Thursday at 7 p.m. and Sundays 11 a.m. The address in the Oakland is 3814 MacArthur Boulevard, Oakland, California, 94619. Don't forget our times of services in Oakland on Thursday, 7 p.m. every Thursday and every Sunday. The Dominion Celebration Service is 11 a.m. Also in San Jose, our address is 286 Bernard Avenue in San Jose. Our midweek service in San Jose is on Wednesday, 7 p.m. every Wednesday and 10 a.m. on Sundays. Also, I want to get you acquainted with our San Francisco location, which is in Daly City. We meet uh, at uh, 699 Saramonte Boulevard in Daly City. 699 Saramonte Boulevard, that's in Daly City. And on Wednesdays, it's 7 p.m. every Wednesday. And on Sunday, it's 10 a.m. All these services are anointed and packed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Come and experience a change. Come and be empowered to live the dominion life. The life of the, the dominion life is a reality. It is God's plan for every believer. It is possible. That is your heritage in the Lord. But you need to come and be empowered. I hope to see you in all of these services. The Lord bless you.